Hi there, and welcome to this video on the dentistry interview, focusing on the topic of the four medical pillars. I'm Alice from Dentist Mind, where we go through the important topics of the dentistry interviews. Whichever university you're applying for, MMI or panel, we've got you covered. If you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button. Whilst you're watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything. We've got helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you. The following video is a free sample of our full interview course, which you can buy by clicking on the link below in the description. So let's get started. Welcome to lesson two on dentistry ethics. This time we're going to be looking at the four medical pillars, or the four pillars of medical ethics as you might otherwise hear them being called. So the four pillars are autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence and justice. Although these are called the four pillars of medical ethics, there's a lot of crossover, which means they're relevant in dentistry too. If you mention these pillars, it's really going to make you stand out to an interviewer because it will show that you've done your research and understood this side of the topic. If you get asked a question about dental ethics, try and bring at least one of these into your answer because then it will really show to your interviewer you know what you're talking about. So the first pillar is autonomy, and this means the ability to make decisions for yourself, including in healthcare. It can get a little bit blurred when you talk about patients who have conditions which make it more difficult for them to make decisions. And in this situation, you'd have to consider on an individual cases whether the patient is competent enough to make the decision or not. But in a general sense, if a patient is competent enough to make a decision, then you need to respect their autonomy to say yes or no to accepting dental treatment. So for example, in an interview, you might get given a scenario where a dentist is recommending a treatment to a patient and they don't want it. In this situation, as long as the patient's competent to make this decision, you must respect their autonomy in allowing them to say no to the treatment. The next pillar is beneficence, and this is always trying to act in a way which benefits the patient. It's acting in a patient's best interests and goes in hand with non-maleficence, which is not doing harm to a patient. An example scenario you could get given in an interview would be a patient is recommended urgent dental treatment, but they can't afford it. However, the dentist might still proceed with this treatment as it is the best thing for the patient because it's an urgent treatment and without doing this, the patient could come to harm. So despite the fact the patient can't afford the treatment, the dentist decides to proceed with it anyway. So if you got given this scenario in one of your interviews, you could mention the fact that it applies to the principle of beneficence with regard to the principles of medical ethics. So the next pillar of medical ethics is non-maleficence, which means not doing harm to a patient. And again, this goes in hand with beneficence, which is doing good. So for example, you would not do a treatment on a patient which is risky. If you're not qualified enough or if you don't think you're competent enough, then as a dentist, you would decide to refer them to someone who is qualified or competent to do this treatment. So an example you might get given in an interview would be a dentist ignoring a patient's medical history and proceeding with a treatment which is risky. In this circumstance, the dentist is putting the patient at risk, which is not following the principle of non-maleficence. So you could talk to your interviewer about this and explain how the dentist is not following this principle and how this is going to impact on the patient. So the final pillar of medical ethics is justice, and this is all about being fair. It's about what is the overall benefit to society, not discriminating against anyone and following human rights. It's always acting within the law. So an example you might get given in an interview would be that a dentist is spending two hours on each of his private patients and only five minutes on NHS patients. So clearly this dentist is not being fair in the time he is allocating to each patient. And therefore you could mention that they are not following the principle of justice. So that was lesson two and lesson two is now complete. Hopefully this has given you some information about the pillars of medical ethics. And therefore, if you get asked a question about ethics in one of your interviews, you can draw on these principles and talk about them and therefore impress your examiner. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe by clicking below and please leave a comment. Click here to continue watching our interview series and to unlock full access to 70 tutorials covering core interview topics, MMI mocks, top tips and more, click on the link in the description below.